Crazy Eddie's the man on the move with his Crazy Eddie portable blowout blitz. Anything and everything goes. Crazy Eddie's crushing prices on color TVs, video recorders, stereo systems, compact disc players. It's the story of Crazy Eddie is the stuff of legend. This consumer electronics giant was not only a marketing genius, but also a cunning fraudster who engineered the largest retail fraud in American history. A federal judge called Antar a liar, a cheat, and a person who simply cannot be trusted. Eddie's business tactics were rife with fraudulent activity and aggressive sales practices that gave him a distinct advantage over his competitors, allowing him to offer prices that were simply unbeatable. Crazy Eddie, his prices are insane! His prices are insane! insane. With his charismatic persona and cunning business tactics, Eddie was able to fool even the most astute investors on Wall Street. Shortly after, Eddie disappeared with hundreds of millions of dollars. Join us in this video as we delve into the details of how Crazy Eddie orchestrated the largest retail fraud in American history. This is Crazy Eddie, whose real name is Eddie Antar, and he's not to be mistaken with Jerry Carroll the man who appears in the commercials. Nonetheless, Eddie Antar was equally as charismatic as his commercial counterpart. Crazy Eddie was a pioneer in the retail electronics industry. Instead of selling home electronics in conventional department stores, Crazy Eddie offered discounted electronics and created stores with a lively party atmosphere. Blitz. Get anything and everything in TV and video on sale now! Crazy Eddie, his prices are... Bananas. Its advertising campaigns were also very aggressive, making Crazy Eddie a household name in New York. The company promised to beat any competitor's prices, because Crazy Eddie will beat any price you can find, which helped it quickly gain market dominance. It all started with a single store in Brooklyn in 1971, and by its peak in 1987, Crazy Eddie had 43 stores and employed thousands of people. In 1984, Crazy Eddie went public and investors were eager to invest in the company, leading to a peak market cap of $600 million dollars. However, the investors were unaware that the Crazy Eddie empire was a massive fraud. Eddie Antar was born into a close-knit Sephardic Jewish family in Brooklyn. His family was primarily composed of small-time merchants, and his father was in the discount retail industry. Eddie's father would routinely skim off cash sales from his business to evade taxes on those sales. Eddie learned the tricks of the trade from his father and, in his early teens, began selling low-cost consumer goods that he obtained through dubious connections. When Eddie turned 22, his father opened a consumer electronics store in Brooklyn called Sight and Sound, and Eddie started working there. Eddie's aggressive sales techniques earned him the moniker Crazy Eddie. In 1970, Sight and Sound was almost bankrupt, and Eddie purchased his cousin's share of the business. As a result, Eddie became the majority shareholder of Sight and Sound and began running the day-to-day -day operations. The store was renamed Crazy Eddie in 1971, and Eddie promptly turned the business around, relocating to a bigger store. Eddie followed in his father's footsteps by pocketing all the cash sales and not reporting them on his taxes. To avoid further taxes, he also employed family members and paid them off the books. Crazy Eddie was doing well, but manufacturers were unhappy with Eddie because he was selling products below their suggested retail price. Rather than raising his prices, Eddie turned to the underground market to obtain his merchandise. Through the underground market, Eddie was able to acquire new products before his competitors, such as the Sony Walkman when it was first released. Eddie took took his scheming to another level by placing a spy in the accounting firm that audited his company. He paid for his cousin, Sam Antar, to attend accounting school and join the CPA firm that audited Crazy Eddie's finances. Through Sam, Eddie gained insight into how audits were conducted and where the vulnerabilities lay. By 1978, Eddie and his family members were skimming 20% of all revenues, amounting to millions of dollars in physical cash. We're skimming about $3 million, maybe $4 million a year. As Eddie ran out of places to stash the cash, he started taking monthly flights to Israel to deposit money in secret bank accounts. His family members also began traveling to Israel to deposit tens of millions of dollars in Eddie's secret bank accounts. Eddie wanted to take his fraud to the next level by taking Crazy Eddie public on the New York Stock Exchange. However, before doing so, the company had to undergo a rigorous financial audit. Eddie relied on his cousin, Sam Antar, who arranged for an inexperienced auditor to be assigned 
bank to audit Crazy Eddie's finances. Eddie moved inventory from store to store during the audit, resulting in appealing financials for his 13 locations. Crazy Eddie officially went public in September of 1984 under the ticker symbol CRZY. After Crazy Eddie went public, he used the profits to open 26 new stores in just three years. Meanwhile, Eddie secretly sold $40 million worth of his own shares. However, despite his financial success, the company Crazy Eddie was actually losing money each year. In an effort to hide this fact, he had to inflate the size of his financial reports with each audit. This deception caused stress in his family life and ultimately led to an affair that further fractured his family. The difference between his true earnings and the false financial reports continued to grow, making the discovery of his fraud inevitable. In an attempt to salvage his wealth, Eddie cashed out another $30 million worth of stock. This triggered a closer examination of Crazy Eddie's finances, which uncovered discrepancies and caused the share price to fall. A business rival took advantage of this situation and acquired Crazy Eddie in a hostile takeover bid. The new owners soon discovered that Crazy Eddie had overstated their inventory by a shocking $80 million. Before the authorities could catch him on racketeering charges, Eddie fled to Israel with six fake passports and access to millions of dollars he had stashed away in Tel Aviv bank accounts. Meanwhile, Sam Antar, Eddie's cousin who had been placed in the financial auditing business as a spy, decided to come clean to authorities in exchange for immunity. Sam explained in detail how the Crazy Eddie fraud worked and received just six months of house arrest for his testimony. And you turned around and yes. turned on your family. Yes, I put them all in jail. Two years after fleeing to Israel, Eddie attempted to withdraw money from a bank account in Geneva, Switzerland. However, he learned that his account with over $40 million had been frozen. The Swiss bank contacted American authorities about the incident and helped them track Eddie back to Israel. The police finally caught Eddie by setting a trap. They had a female police officer wear a short skirt with no underwear and bend over the hood of her car, knowing that when Eddie drove by, he couldn't resist. Eddie fell for the trap and was promptly arrested. Eddie was sent back to America to face justice and was eventually sentenced to eight years in prison for his crimes. The company Crazy Eddie went bankrupt in 1989, which caused investors to lose hundreds of millions of dollars. If you're interested in a detailed account of Crazy Eddie's life, I would recommend the new book Retail Gangster, which you can also find in audiobook format. In case you decide to purchase the book, you can use the link in the description to buy it, and I'll receive a small commission. If you found the story of Crazy Eddie's fraud to be interesting, you might want to hear about the story of Adani, who has recently been accused of being the biggest con man in history. I have a video that covers Adani's story, and you can click on the screen to watch it now.